Ricky Rudd, by many accounts, is one of NASCAR's underrated greats. While he may not have the numbers of many recent drivers, his ability to endure over the years can grant him a great legacy alone. From the late 1970s through the early 2000s, he was a perennial top 10 threat. And from 1983 to 1998, he'd also win at least one or two races in every one of those 16 straight seasons, a record that would stand until the early 2020s. In this was a win in the 1997 Brickyard 400, putting him in the prestigious list with guys like Jeff Gordon, Dale Earnhardt, and Dale Jarrett at the time, being the second to ever kiss the bricks. With all of this, he'd be nicknamed and remembered with the nickname Iron Man after making 788 straight starts. But as of the early 2000s, his advanced age would start to show in his results with the Wood Brothers as from 2003 to 2005, he finished below 20th in points every season. So entering 2006 at the age of 49, he'd take a year off only returning once to fill in for an injured Tony Stewart. But notice he didn't retire, because in 2007, he'd return one last time, this time being with the Yates number 88 team. Yates' best days were far behind them, but with the promising young driver of David Gilland in the stable, Rudd could come in as a good veteran presence needed to help the team rebuild. And in the Daytona 500 qualifying, this looked to be starting up with a sweep of the front row. Little did anyone know that those two laps would be not the start of something good, but instead a season highlight. I'm pretty sure, pretty sure that Kent's has gotten the back of him. Looked like maybe Jamie may have had to lift out of the throttle just a little bit. Here comes the rest of these guys. Like I said, it's, we're coming to the end of the race. You don't lift now. And Darrell Ricky Rudd could not swerve to the right because Earnhardt was there. And they just all stacked up. Tight racing quarters. Tight. Yeah, you see McMurray get around there with the Matt Kent's is right behind him. Jamie in the 26. Smoke and you can't really see a lot with the smoke. Car starts swerving. Oh, Rudd got hit from behind. It looked like maybe Dale Jr. lifted him up. Well, damage there on Ricky Rudd's car from contact. Under caution once again. Like our points leader, Jeff Gordon, he'll get those five Trouble, points. trouble already off turn four. J.J. Yaley. David Reagan. More cars to follow. Chain reaction. Ricky Rudd, Casey Bam. Mears. Oh, Rudd up on top of Reagan's car. Uh, what was that about? Last time I remember, I start by points here. Iceberg, <laughs> dead ahead. <laughs> Come on around. I'll show you what happened coming off turn number four. Watch the 18 and the six side by side, left of your screen. Oh, the six car just pushes up into Jaylee in the 18, and uh, that started the whole mess. Then they come back out into the racetrack right here, and that's what created the rest of the problem. Here comes Rudd. Watch this thing back up on top of that six car. Ricky was trying to slow up, Daryl, and got turned around, got hit from behind and turned around. You know, I don't think it hurt Rudd's car much. Watch J.J. Yaley coming from the right, the green car. Yeah, he's right back here. You'll see him coming off turn four. He gets a little bit loose, but I think that's because the six car had already made contact with him and got him sideways. And then these guys are all trying to woe up. Here comes Rudd and company. Johnny Sauter in the 70 had to go down through the grass. He was back there behind Ricky Rudd. But I think J.J. Yaley, the 18 car, he was as high on the racetrack as he could go. Yeah, Reagan just said uh, the, there's not a lot of grip on the first couple of laps. And uh, Reagan just got it, got it back in the gas, pushed up into him. I know Rudd's car has got some damage, but I think it might be repairable. Let's watch from Johnny Sauter, who started 35th. Go inside, inside, way inside. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I like that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> okay, I think you're good, Johnny. 
But you're right, Darrell. They need to try to fix that 88 car. You heard Jeff Hammond in the pre-race talk about the guys at the back side of the top 35. He's fighting to stay in the top 35 to be locked in the show. Right. They're right here. Here's the 48 car right here. But the 96, Tony Raines, looks like he got up into Jimmy Johnson, the 48, initially off turn two, I believe, Darrell. I believe you're right. They're pushing Truex's car out of the grass. I guess it will, it's trying to refire. But... Well, you're in the middle. Boy, Ricky Rutt took a hard shot in the Boy, wall. Boy, he did. There. I mean, he just had no idea that was coming. All that unburnt fuel piled up, and that's why they couldn't get him restarted. Now they have, as Ricky Rudd, former winner and veteran of this track back to when it was a half mile, walks away. This is what you always worry that doesn't happen, that you don't want to happen. When he tried to correct it, he just gets right into the left rear of his teammate, Ricky Rudd, that 88 car hard lick to the inside wall. But he just got very loose as he came up off the exit of turn four, Gilliland did. I guarantee you, Gilliland is already apologizing to Robert before they ever start, <laughs> before they ever hit the wall. These guys are on colder tires, uh, the air pressure down, and they're having to start these cars so loose, and it looked like the 26 car just got loose on the inside. We talk about how aero-dependent these cars are. You need that air, and when they get it taken away from you, and you've got a loose car anyway, then it creates a big problem like this. Yeah, the thing that was impressive to me, that uh, you talk about, look how narrow that is, and it's almost like they get stacked up when that one car gets loose, and they're on top of one another. I think patience also would be a great virtue at this point in time. Like I said, they're very, very loose. They need to take their time, feel their way back into the race, and let the th race come to them. Looks like these guys are running all over each other. Well, let's check in with Dave. And Jamie McMurray's crew is working on the car right now. Uh, look to us like an air off the car situation, Jamie. Is that what it felt like? The racetrack, and just a moment ago, the 88 of Ricky Rudd has pulled off. But here comes Tony Stewart on the inside. Play. Ricky Rudd gets loose going at the corner. We saw that in the Bush race yesterday. A lot of problems with that happening. And nowhere to go. And you know, that was a hard hit with Jimmy Johnson, but the car doesn't look that tore up in the back of it. These things are, man, they're like army tanks. Oh, oh, it got some help. Ricky Rudd got some help from the one car, it looks like. Yeah, that different angle showed that. That's, that's good. Let's watch it, Jimmy. He got hit in the back from Matt Kenson. <laughs> His left. All right, from Jeff Burton's onboard camera, let's look ahead. Big, big floor on the bottom. Stand in front of him. He's up high. He's up high. Easy. Easy. Come on, come on, come on. Great job, boss. Great job. <clears throat> Different angle. Uh -huh. Yeah, Martin Truex got in the back of Ricky Rudd pretty hard early in the corner. It's like he just punted him in there. Juan Pablo Montoya gets damaged. Whoa, contact back there to double zero. Jeff Gordon is involved as well. Rudiman. Kevin Harvick somehow gets through. David Gilland is involved. The 88 of Ricky Rudd. Looks like Jeff Gordon made it through. He's got some damage on the left front fender. He's bouncing through the grass right now. Gordon is. This crash would knock Rudd, the 50-year-old driver, out for five weeks with a separated shoulder. But this wouldn't be the end of his cup tenure just yet, as he would return for the final six events. And with that, Rudd's career would not end with a roar, but rather a 21st place whimper in Miami and a 33rd place points finish. Not only did he leave his ride, but... Instead, the ride itself just wouldn't be the same or exist in the same way in 2008. M&Ms and Mars would leave to sponsor Kyle Busch at JGR in the new number 18 rebrand. The number 88 would be given to Hendrick Motorsports for Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s team. Hell, the font of the car would be rebranded and the 28 would take its place. And it just wouldn't be the same in 2008. It was like Rudd's 2007 season was merely a bad fever dream. But with that, I'll pass it on to you. What are the worst comeback seasons you remember? Let me know down in the comments below. And while you're at it, leave a like in this video, share this video, and subscribe to this channel for more great NASCAR content. And thank you so much, not only to all my channel members, but to just everyone for reaching out and the support over the last couple days. <laughs> not pretty often that you get hit by a tornado. So, until next time, have a good one.